Hello and welcome to this presentation on the Staff Email Upgrade Project. My name is Megan and I am in the Training and User Communications Group in IT Services. In this presentation, I'll give you a short background to the project and we'll give you a quick tour around the new Staff Email Service, Office 365. We'll pay particular attention to the apps within Office 365 which you might find the most useful. This includes the Mail app, the Calendar app, Skype for Business, and the OneDrive app. So let's get started. We'll begin with why we are upgrading the staff email. The current staff email and calendar services are reaching the end of their technological life and require upgrading. Because these services are critical to the university, IT Services wishes to provide staff with the most up-to-date and feature-rich services available. And what is Office 365? This is Office 365. Every time you log in to office.tcd.ie, you will see this screen. This is your home screen where all of your apps live, including your mail app. A broader definition of Office 365 is that it is a collection of apps and cloud services that you can use across a variety of devices, including your PC, your Mac, your iPhone, your Android, or your Windows Phone. It also offers a load of benefits for you, including a large 50 gigabyte exchange mailbox hosted in Office 365, the latest suite of Office apps, including Outlook, Calendars, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Skype for Business. It can be installed on up to five devices, including phones and tablets, and you get one terabyte of personal storage space for use in OneDrive. You can access Office 365 by logging in at office.tcd.ie. And one good way to navigate around Office 365 is by using the App Launcher. All of the apps that appear in this section are the apps that are available to you through Office 365. Click or tap the App Launcher in the upper left-hand corner of your browser window and then choose a tile. Now, let's begin our tour of the apps available. Beginning with your email, you now have two ways that you can get your email. You can either log in through the Office portal at office.tcd.ie and select the Mail app, or you can go directly to your email by logging in at mail.tcd.ie. Once there, you'll see that Mail within Office 365 is very similar to Mail in Outlook or Entourage on your desktop. The look and feel is slightly different, but everything works pretty much the same way. You have a search box so that you can search all of your folders, contacts, and messages. You have a folders list to organize your messages. You can create a new message by clicking on the new button at the top of the screen. Your message list displays all of the messages you have in the folder you have open. For example, messages in your inbox will be displayed here. And finally, there is a reading pane at the right of your screen which displays the message you have selected. After your inbox, the calendar app is probably where you'll spend most of your time. In the following demo, we'll review the different views for your calendar, including day, work week, week, and month. We'll see how to add a new item or event to your calendar, how to share your calendar with a contact in Trinity, and how to view a colleague's calendar that has been shared with you. So let me show you around the calendar app in Office 365. First, we need to get to Office 365 online by going to office.tcd.ie. Once there, we'll see the Office 365 home screen or portal. Because we want to use the calendar app, we'll click on the app launcher in the upper left-hand corner of the screen and click on the calendar tile or the calendar app. and you'll be brought to your staff email calendar. Once there, you'll notice that you can view your calendar in four different ways, by day, by work week, by week, and by month. In the month view, you'll notice these two little arrows here under today. By clicking on those arrows, you'll get a summary of the events or meetings you have for that selected day. You can change that selection easily just by clicking on another day in the month.
So for now, let's just close those arrows and try and add an event to our calendar. I can do that by going up here to New and clicking on New. I'll enter the details for the event that I want to add or the meeting that I want to add. Important event. I'll put the location in my office. I'll check that the days and times are exactly as I want them. And I'll add a message here. And then from here, all I need to do is click on save. I can see that that important event or that event that I've just added is here. To get a summary of that event, I'll click on it once and a summary message pops up. So this event has been on, added on the 29th of March at eight o'clock in the morning. It's in my office. The title of it is important event and the message that I've included is below it. I'm the organizer. I can either edit this event or delete this event. Now, if I want to add a colleague to this event, I'll click on edit and I'll scroll up here to the people section and add in a colleague's name. As soon as I enter my cursor into the people section or the search in the people section, I'll notice that suggested contacts will pop up. I'll add David Hamill to this event and then I'll click on scheduling assistant. When I click on scheduling assistant, I'll see my calendar next to David's calendar. And over here, I can see that David is free. So all I need to do is click on OK and then click on send. If I want to share my calendar with somebody, all I need to do is click on the share button at the top of our screen, click on calendar, and then enter my contact's name or my colleague's name. In this event, I'll add David again, click on David's name, and then edit what details I want him to see on my calendar. So I just drop this menu down here and I'll say availability only. I can add a subject to this message if I want to, but I'll just leave this as it is. I'd like to share my calendar with you. So I click on send and away we go. David can now see my calendar as well. Skype for Business is a very helpful app to use if you want to send a message or a file to a colleague quite quickly, or if you want to have a video chat with somebody. In the following demo, We'll review how to add a contact to your contacts list, how to send an instant message to a contact, how to make a call and make a video chat with a contact, how to send a file using the instant message feature, and after the demo, you'll see a brief explanation of the different presence indicators used for Skype. So once I have the Skype for Business client open and I'm signed in, if I want to add a contact to my contacts list, I simply search for them in this section here. I'll add their name and my contact or my colleague will pop up here. When I see their name, I'll right click on their name and scroll down to add a contacts list and put them in my contacts list. When you want to send a colleague an instant message, all you need to do is double click on their name and this screen will appear. Type in your message and hit enter. If your contact is online and they're replying to your message, Skype for Business will show you that they are typing a message to you. You see that right here. So Sarah has replied that she's free to chat. I'll send her a quick message to let her know that I'll give her a call. To make a voice call, I'll simply click on the blue phone button at the bottom of this instant message screen and click on Skype for Business Call. Yes? Sarah? Hi, Megan. Oh, hello. 
Hi. Hello. I can't see you. Oh, there you are. Yes. Can you hear me? How, How are, are you, you doing? Good. How are you? Doing well, thank you. Are you looking forward to the presentation yes, tomorrow? Yes. yes, I can't hear you. And we're talking about the presentation that people might be watching right now. <laughs> anyway, Sarah, will I send you a file yes, over instant message? So I have an image here on my desktop. All I need to do is click on that image and drag it into the instant message field and it will send that message to, or that image to Sarah. Now that works for any file, video, PDF, Word file, image file. Great, I have that now. Great, lovely picture. Excellent. It's a lovely picture, isn't it? Anyway, thanks for that, Sarah. Okay. And I shall Good see you bye, tomorrow. Bye. You too. Have a nice evening. Bye. You may notice a green light or red light next to your image in Skype for Business. This is the presence indicator, which allows your colleagues to see your availability when you're signed into Skype for Business. The green light means that you're free to speak. The red light means that you're busy. The amber light means that you're away or inactive. The grayish blue indicator means that you're offline. And the white indicator means that your presence is unknown. Please note that when you're signed into Skype for Business, your availability is visible next to your name in your email as well. One other thing to note is that your availability will change depending on what is in your calendar. For example, if your calendar indicates that you're in a meeting, then your presence indicator will do so as well. Another application you may find useful within Office 365 is OneDrive. In the following demo, we'll review what OneDrive can be used for and what it should not be used for. We'll create and upload files and save them to your OneDrive. We'll upload existing files to your OneDrive from your computer or any other location. We'll see how to share files with colleagues. And we'll use the syncing client to see how to link a file library to your OneDrive. Before we get started, let me tell you what OneDrive is. OneDrive is personal cloud storage where your data is stored safely and securely on the internet and available from any internet connected device. Staff can use up to one terabyte of storage with a maximum file size of two gigabytes. The beauty of OneDrive is that you're saving your files to one location but can access those same files on multiple devices. This flexibility allows you to work on a document or analyze a spreadsheet from anywhere and pick up right from where you last left off. OneDrive is handy to use for day-to-day -day files you are working on or if you want to back up important files. One thing to note is that while you can share your files very easily with colleagues and students using OneDrive, it is not a departmental storage drive, nor is it a departmental document library. Trying to use it as departmental storage can get quite messy, and thus OneDrive should be used as personal file storage only. Even though you have one terabyte of storage with OneDrive, it does not replace an information system or database, which are more suitable for a collection of files. That said, let's have a look at how to use OneDrive. We'll start by clicking on the OneDrive app within Office 365. At the left side of the screen, you will see a search function which will allow you to search through your whole OneDrive library for files. Underneath the search function, you will see a list of different types of files stored in your OneDrive and how much space you have available. Just to the right of the search function, you'll see a button labeled New. When you click on this button, you will see a menu which will allow you to create a new Word document, Excel file, PowerPoint presentation, and more. If I select Word document, OneDrive will open up the online version of Word. It's not quite as robust as the desktop version of Word, but for the most part, it will give me everything that I need to enter content, insert a table or images, all with the different fa formatting options that are available. So let's enter some content now. And we'll insert a table.
I can easily name and save this document by clicking on the title at the top and entering a name. Because I am using the online version of Word, my file will save automatically to OneDrive. I can go back to my OneDrive library by clicking on the App Launcher in the left-hand corner of the screen and clicking OneDrive. And here, I can see the document that I just created. That's one way of creating documents within OneDrive, but I can also upload files to OneDrive as well. To upload a file, simply click on the Upload button next to the New button and browse for the file you'd like to upload. By clicking on a file in my OneDrive library, I can share, download, delete, or rename the file. Let's go ahead and click on a file so that we can share that file with a colleague. When I select the file, I can see the options at the top of the screen that say Open, Share, Download, or Get a Link. By clicking on Share, I get a screen that will allow me to collaborate on this file with colleagues by an invitation. So I enter my colleague's name. I change their permission levels to either edit or view only. And then I include a message. Organizing your files into folders in OneDrive is very easy. Simply click New, name, select folder, name your folder, and create. And now all I need to do is drag and drop files into this folder. Finally, to sync your OneDrive with your computer, click on the sync at the top of your screen and then sync now. If at this point you don't have the syncing client on your computer, you'll be prompted to install it. Because I already have the syncing client installed on my computer, all I need to do is select Microsoft OneDrive for Business, OK, and then my files will begin to sync. From this point, I can click on Show My Files, and I'll see where my files are syncing and where they are stored. Any files that get uploaded to this folder will be stored in OneDrive. This means that your files will be available to you whenever you're online and offline and using OneDrive. While Office 365 is an incredibly simple and fairly intuitive service to use, even the best of us can run into kinks in the road. And if that's the case, then there's help available. You can contact the IT service desk by email or phone, or you can drop into us on the ground floor of Ors and Fiersic. We have loads of support information available on the IT Services website. You can find that information on the staff email webpage. And finally, Microsoft has very robust information and tutorials available on their support site at support.office.com. Thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation and we wish you the very best.